when the nasty emails uh, began to hit Jill Kelly. So I got to go to right. Simone uh, Bain. You're a psychosexual and relationship therapist. Um, women are attracted to power. Just like guys can be attracted to a cheerleader or a flight attendant, women often are turned on by n nothing turns them on more than a man in uniform with a lot of medals. It's a turn on. Yeah, uh, it, it is a turn on. And even you saying it, Jane, I was thinking, oh, a man in uniform, how very nice. However, a married man in uniform, really not so attractive unless you have something wrong with you. What is wrong with our society that we can't take responsibility? And these powerful men, Jane, you're going to be reporting it next week. This happens over and over again. There is certainly a connection between power and thrill-seeking. The more powerful you feel, the more thrill-seeking you may want to do, the more thrill-seeking you do, the more powerful you feel. So they feed off each other. But there is, you know, an intoxicating effect clearly with Pateas feeling, my goodness, this woman is just so obsessed with him, into him, wanting to find out everything about him, curious about him. We all know what it feels like at the beginning of a relationship. It is intoxicating when somebody is so interested in you. And but let's this not dress this up. This is disgusting. Is the hangover right now. If they were intoxicated, they're hungover now. The joke's already starting on late night talk shows. Listen to this from The Tonight Show. Check this out. We'll be back on the other side. You know, it's amazing. Simone Bain, psychologist and relationship therapist versus Steve Sanagati, author Code of Honor, oh, and who is a noted bad boy. Okay, Simone, you feel that this is a betrayal. Uh, this is this affair by General Petraeus to a woman. Uh, he's been married 38 years, and he has an affair with a woman 20 years his junior who's a hottie, as uh, Steve Sanagati would say. Uh, Steve says it's no big deal. Why is it a big deal, in your opinion? It is a big deal because it's unethical living. It's like a cuckoo going in and stealing Says another who? bird's eggs. Why would Says you who? do that? And you says Ooh. me, Steve, and obviously <laughs> I have a lot of say. Um, the point is, you don't want this for yourself. This is how we lose our integrity. We can get our needs met in a marriage, whether that's sexually, emotionally, and like our dear caller Beth earlier, I tell you, if she came to see me, she wouldn't be cheating. She would be so, with a partner so, that can meet her so look, needs. All right, Steve Sanagati, your side. What, what's, what's worse, to lie to your partner or to lie to yourself and continue living that lie? Ethics are based on society. It's not based on anything other than what we think is right and wrong for the time. It's and I can go silly. through history and show you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So my, my, my point being, Simone, and I respect your opinion, and I get it. I believe in ethics. I believe in that stuff, but I also think that there comes a time in your life where you need to be honest with yourself. And this guy, his, there was nothing happening in his relationship. He's not going to be around forever. And this woman also that allegedly cheated on her husband, you know what, or the woman that called in, it's like, you know what, live life. It's happening right now. This is it. Just be true to yourself and try but to be the best the person but, you but can But let be. me say this. But not to the yes, expense you can live your feelings. life authentically, but I'd like to weigh in that honesty is always an option. It's not the right. cheating, it's the lying. You're living a duplicitous life. If you don't want to be with your wife anymore, tell her. Accept the consequences. Maybe it's not going to be great for his career. And then be with the woman you want to be with. As opposed to saying, I want my cake and eat it too. I want to have my wife because I want to be able to say I was married yeah. for 38 years and I am a good family man. And then cheating on the side. I think that's the betrayal, the lie. People have Absolutely. feelings. And it's Go ahead. I'll give you the final 10 seconds. Yeah. Sorry, Jane, I was just going to say, it's kind of like being married, but actually, I want to play single. What is the point? <laughs> We're going to continue this debate Fun. on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, you know, work on the marriage. Don't cheat. And if you're the head of the doggone CIA, you might want to, you know, maybe get Here, separated the, and then do your thing. Here's the problem. You're an exception. But, Simone Bain, let's be real. With a lot of people, the lust wears off. And then it's attachment. And when your body reacts to somebody else, it is. And the intellect is a very low defense against a, an urge, a biological sexual urge. And sometimes the mind gets hijacked uh, by that urge and ends up, instead of fighting the bad behavior, saying, how do I engage in that bad behavior without anybody finding out? 
Yeah, now, Jane, I love what you said, because basically you're saying something that all of us women know, sex can make fools out of a lot of men, no matter how <laughs> intelligent they are, quite frankly. And it is a really sad thing, because look, there are people, my good friend, Dr. Drew Pinsky, he's been married for 27 years. He doesn't cheat. Men don't have to cheat. We can't blame this biological urge because cheating is a sign of unethical living, as I was saying, and it's a sign of immaturity. Get your needs met within your marriage. For goodness sake, there are ways of spicing up our love lives, of, Simone, you know, really do creating people passion. Really, really, does, do people necessarily have what it takes to remain happily married? 38 years. I know they can do yes, it. Yes, I believe so. All yes, right. But well, we, uh, we as human beings, we're not happy all of the time, are we? That is the fantasy. We have got to go into marriage knowing that we take the rough with the smooth. I'm going to give Steve Santagati the last word, but we're running out of time. So sum it up, dude. <laughs> the bottom line is we're human beings. Whenever you're pointing one finger at someone, you have three pointing back at yourself. Jane, I love the way you put it uh, earlier. When you, when you said, you know, your mind is hijacked by your, by your urge. We are biological human beings at the end of the day. And we must be honest with ourselves. We must not let these scandals deprive us of what we really are as human beings. I think this is really good when this stuff comes out because eventually it won't even matter. We're being truthful. I think political correctness has gone too far. I think all of this stuff, you can't even talk and say what you think anymore. I want to go back to Archie Bunker in the well, 70s. There, I said it. And let me say this. In, in General Petraeus' defense, we live in a culture where uh, a general with a lot of medals on his chest isn't supposed to, let's say, get divorced. Uh, he's supposed to be this perfect family man. And any time we impose perfection on somebody, we are essentially condemning them to creating secrets. So I, I wish that we live in a culture where General Petraeus, if he was unhappy in his marriage, if, I'm saying if, I don't know, I don't live with them, could say, you know what, I'm getting divorced and I'm still gonna go on and have this fabulous career and we wouldn't punish him as a culture for that. That's what I think we have to start thinking about. All right, fantastic panel, thank you so much. On the other side of the break, we're gonna talk about this fascinating case. We've got this software mogul who is apparently allegedly on the run in Belize and then there's another American who's dead. Stay right there.